Well, welcome everybody to another Successful Survivors um, podcast, where we get to talk about some of the characteristics, traits, and skill sets that we have as successful survivors. One of them that I think we should talk about today is really versatile to all of us. And I'm going to give you ladies and listeners the name of it, um, Healthy Relationships. And I want to just mention that there's kind of two words there. There's healthy and there's relationships. Relationships are inevitable. Uh, It's one of those really fascinating things that we all have in life. I think I mentioned it in a previous podcast that from the time of birth, we are inevitably going to have relationships. We are greeted by a person, whether it's the doctor or the parent, um, all the way to the rest of our life, in our work, in our life, in our childbearing, in um, elderly, all the way in every phase of our life, we are having relationships. They can be lots of different words of relationships that overcomplicates it, interpersonal, extrapersonal, all that type of stuff. But the point is, to me, as are they healthy or are they unhealthy? Or I think, Rhonda, that one of your words is going to be, are they toxic? But I have to wonder, how do you know if they're toxic if you don't know what a healthy relationship is? Okay. And a lot of times in trauma, we've we've came from really unhealthy relationships, like my parents who would call me names or say degrading things. And I felt like that was a relationship from a parent to a child that would mimic a, a caregiver or maybe an intimate partner relationship, mm-hmm. which could really lead to unhealthy factors. So it took me discovering what a healthy relationship was to decide, ooh, That's not healthy, and I don't want that anymore. So today, I thought maybe we'd explore what are the characteristics that we feel we deserve in a healthy relationship, healthy relationship. And I think it's fun that we can just kind of break down into what of each of those, what does it mean to us, and and how did we learn those? How did we decide that was something for a healthy relationship? There's lots of words we can choose. Um, I'm going to be honest. The first word for me is honesty. Healthy relationships and <laughs> honest. Um, yes. But that's really important to me because I like people to be straightforward. Sometimes we have to remember that there's a difference between honest and trustful. Somebody can be very honest about not being trustful, right? So hmm. in particular, how you say that. Diana, you're looking at me like, what does that mean? Yeah, because I want you to expand on that because honest and then. And trustful. Those are both characteristics. I trust. How can you be honestly? Yeah, go ahead. No, go for it. Yeah, no, that's what I'm asking you. Yeah, I need need some more. Give me more. You can be (laughs) honestly distrustful. Okay. So that comes into when you say you'll do something and then you don't, but you're honest about it, even though it hurts feelings, it's intentionally harming another person, but you're honest about it. Insensitive a lot of times is what can come with that. So the reason I mentioned that is honesty is really important to me, but in that I always mentioned, but that also includes being trustful, that that's an overlap for me that I think is really, really important. And something I value with the group here, when we talk about trauma and, and things we've survived, that we're really honest about it, but we're also trustful, um, trusting that we're not going to be judged on it. So that's a part of healthy relationships oh. for me. Diana, what do you I like that? Um I really like that you said that because I know that I haven't, I have not been perfect in my life. So I've had many relationships where, um, and I can pull from high school because in high school, you know, number one, I didn't learn boundaries. So I didn't understand boundaries really as a kid, you know? Um, and so when you move into a relationship and you're kind of going off of, you know, uh, whatever a boyfriend girlfriend type of relationship in high school should look like and then somebody hurts you you kind of want to get back at that person at least as a in a child mind you're like oh you hurt me I'm gonna hurt you back I've been so I've been down that road you know and question and then, for you yeah while you're talking about boundaries I think it's important we understand what is a boundary I you need to tell me that 
you have the initials. <laughs> I you, don't you hold that thought for one second, Diana, yeah. because you have yeah. the best example of boundaries and how we don't understand what they are, but we value them. You know, boundaries can be physical boundaries, like our vicinity in relation mm-hmm. to another person. They can be emotional boundaries saying, you know what? I don't want to talk about that right now. My personal life is not appropriate right now. Mm -hmm. Um, It can be psychological, like, no, we're, you're, I'm not going to listen when you say that. Uh, I I worked in uh, as a case manager before, and I'd have to hang up the phone when I would get cussed out. You know, that's a psychological wow. and emotional. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's spiritual, but it's setting limits on things that mm-hmm. intrude us in any of our ways, not only in a sexual way um, or a physical way, but also other ways. And you were saying that in what you were talking about, Diana. So I just wanted yeah. to to mention that. So. No, Continue and on. that's that's absolutely right. But there, exactly, sexual way, um, a friend. There's there's people who will ask me even today about anything personal or whatever. I've always I'm an open book. Here you go. I I don't care, right? So I'm an open book. But there's probably things that aren't really comfortable for me sometimes if someone asks me. But I don't want to hurt their feelings. So I don't set that boundary for myself. I don't give myself that. Um, at, well, I guess it's the boundary. I don't get, I don't let myself have a boundary. I basically go, oh, well, I don't want to make them feel bad. They obviously are asking me a question because they want to know the answer. I don't care if I tell them the answer. So I tell them the answer, whatever it is. That, and, you know, and, and maybe it's not appropriate to have that conversation. And maybe it's not appropriate to have that friendship with that person because maybe they're not a true friend to me. Maybe they're just looking for what they can get from me. So that they can hurt me with that information later. Right. And that's how P and I, I have, oh my gosh, I have had that even recently in my life where I, I pour myself into someone and then I get, I get that kind of used against me in a way. And now they're disrespectful when they speak to me because they think they can be. And I'm like, what are we doing here? How, how is that okay? It, because because I gave you personal information, now you think you know me like that. <laughs> now you think you can yeah. just talk to me like that. You think that's appropriate. It's not appropriate, you know, or whatever. So it it that it goes back to boundaries. And you know, while I'm better than I used to be, um, I get myself caught up in old patterns. Or like my a pastor I had once used to say, he used to call it um, your first language, right? Your first language is what you learn as a kid. And however, to handle certain situations, and even though you learn what's socially acceptable or a better way to communicate, if you are, if your little girl inside is hurt deeply, you are going to that first language. That's what you think with is that first language. Would you agree? Make sense? Am I trying to, am I at least getting my point across that way? But yeah, that kind of, but that's a, that's definitely relationships and boundaries. Um, But I have learned how to have a healthy relationship now so it's at least in my at least in my life now I have I've learned what healthy relationships look like and I love what you said in that of it's you didn't say it this way but I heard this in what you were giving the example in that it's never too late to set a boundary it's Mm -hmm. healthy to set a boundary even if you haven't before that we can change that and create a boundary once we learn that oh Maybe I didn't, or maybe I can, or maybe I should. That it's okay to start doing that when we have it before. Yeah. Rhonda, you're shaking your head like you've you've seen this, you've heard this. What's your thoughts on it? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> well, I'm just following right along with every single thing that's been <clears throat> said. Um, I think going back to your earlier question, Amber, about uh, I think I heard you say what we value in relationships, and and you want honesty and somebody to be trustworthy. And I was thinking, I think for me, character, integrity, and loyalty, really, if I had to, if I had to put them in an order for me, it's loyalty <clears throat> because I've been betrayed. So um, that, and Diana, what you talked about sounded like betrayal to me. Maybe I just mm-hmm. went there because it's, it's a thing for me, but um you know, I think about in, in my marriage, I've been with my husband for now 34 years and, and, um, 
I think of all the things, I mean, I'm sure he, he could name 87 things about me that he wish were different. I could probably name 89 things about him that I wish were different, but for whatever the flaws are or whatever, you know, should be fixed or whatever, there's loyalty, 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 integrity. So for me, I think about all the things that, you know, all the ways that I want to be, I want to be a good person. I want to be kind and patient and forgiving. I want to be humble. I want to be gentle. Um, I'm more like a bull in a china shop, though gentle is hard for me. Um, I mean, all of these things, none of these things really come easily mm -hmm. for me, all the ways that I want to be. So when I think about what I, how I want to be, how I want others to treat me, it's the same. Those are, the, it's the same mm -hmm. thing that, that I want um, in my relationships, but anything that's not quite there never outweighs loyalty. Outweighs loyalty. Like I can put up with just about anything. As long as there's loyalty. Interesting. Yeah. Loyalty, I think, goes very hand in hand with trust, mm -hmm. too. Like there's so many components of relationships that are interlaced with each other that if you build on one, you're going to need to build on the other, too. Because I suspect in that many years of marriage that there's some pretty good trust that goes with that loyalty. You trust that they're loyal, too. I, and I love that. What was your second one, Rhonda, that you listed? Well, I, you know, I said character, which encompasses a lot of things. Uh, integrity, integrity, oh, yes. honesty. It's it mm -hmm. is loyalty. It's I mean, for me, when I say character and integrity, it's it's a whole package of mm -hmm. well-intentioned behavior. So if I'm a person of of good character and I have integrity, then even when I do do something stupid or, you know, put both feet in my mouth, I say the wrong thing and, you know, whatever, you can know that I'm well intentioned and it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. I didn't intend to harm. And knowing that about my husband and knowing that about the people I allow to be closest to me. And it's a small number. Um, but it, it, that's what's required to get in the inner circle. <laughs> because I have, I mean, everybody's human, everybody's going to make mistakes, somebody's going to say something that hurts my feelings, I'm going to say something that hurts somebody else's feelings. But to me, I think as long as there's good character, good intentions, you know, you can ride the surf and, and deal with whatever happens in the relationship. I need to say yeah. something on that too, because you, you hit that right on the head because well-intentioned because, it, and I can go back to a kid and, and almost with an innocence that I've made many mistakes in, in probably every single relationship, there's been something that could have been a mistake misconstrued that could have ended everything in my life. Right. My, my marriage, my this, my that, my friendships, whatever it was. But that well intention, like, it's almost like you don't know what you don't know. What, well, I didn't know that that was, that I was, that that would be perceived that way. Or um, I didn't mean for that to happen. Or, okay, yes, I acted out. Or I was self-destructive. Or, you know, all of these other things that I have been in my whole life from the time I was in middle school until now, you know, there's many things that I've, I've done in my life. But to say that I was not well intentioned, um, you couldn't say, you know what I mean? You can't say like, I only have the best intention, I only always want to help, or I always want to love on people. So it, it's real that really that hit pretty, pretty hard for me just now, because that one was a that was a good one. That integrity is a great one. I think it's mm -hmm. universal uh, desire of of everybody that we would want that in healthy relationships, whether the relationships at work or with friends or even an intimate relationship, because in integrity in itself is 
being honest and having strong morals, being uh, on the inside who you show on the outside. And Mm -hmm. that's crucially important. So I think that is obvious why that many years of marriage, but also just of life challenges, you've came to value integrity. Because a lot of times what we see so much in our childhood or in our traumas, we begin to realize how much we want the opposite of that. When integrity was missing, you become to value integrity even more um, and really integrating it into your relationships and the work and the uh, family relationships that you build. Don, you probably see that as well as they were talking about integrity, but maybe some other ones too. What What's your thoughts on this? Um, integrity is huge. I would, I would agree with that. Um, I was thinking how much um, through the years, uh, not so much in the last about five or six years, that I was just a chameleon. Like whatever anybody wanted, I was just, I would just change with it. And I would just be whatever they wanted me to be instead of being myself. So I've been on a kind of a journey to learn who I am and what do I like. And um, continually saying, hey, not everybody's going to like you and that's okay. <laughs> and not being, you know, taking it personal all the time. So um, I'll just have to say that. And also just being, I think, knowing who I am um, is a start of being healthy, to having a healthy relationship, to being able to know what I want, who I am, um, and being willing to, in the moment, go, like like you already said, Diana, hey, nope, that's not okay, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's, that's been really hard for me to do, and I think that that's, that's, for me, that's a start, and so I've been, been finding more of those healthy boundaries and healthy relationships because I'm not willing to give up who I am in order to have a friend or in order to have someone to talk to. Um, And I'm probably going to cry because this has been a whole thing. Um, (laughs) I know Diana didn't give you the chance to cry before me, but you didn't do it. (laughs) So I'm in this is a real competition. (laughs) I'm just, she knows I'm picking on her. Um, I would say, you know, learning that I don't need validation from other people to be me to use the knowledge that I have, that I have knowledge and sometimes it's different and I present it a different way, but that's okay. Everyone does that. Everyone has their own way to be who they are. And I think along, I think you were talking about it, Diana, something about, um, I've learned that once we tell people things or we even, I've been asking people, Oh, how am I doing at work? Am I doing okay? Does that make sense? And then they're demeaning me and they're talking about me badly. And I'm going, what the heck? And I'm like, wait, Don, as much as you don't like this, you kind of started it. Because I asked for the validation from somebody that shouldn't have had the validation. Well, they're looking at you. Yeah, they're looking at you like she's obviously not confident. She's not confident. She's insecure. She's these things now. So that they attack that character or that that whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Part of you. Yeah. I know that. I know that life. (laughs) Yeah. I know that. Yeah. That, and you know, that actually makes me think of one of the top ones that I see when we list healthy relationships or Rhonda, like you would say of getting rid of some of the toxic things. And it usually lines around the idea of respect. So respect is like in a, a mutual agreement of someone because of their abilities and qualities, a, a worth of that. But in healthy relationships, and this is the topic, I want you to think of a response with this. Isn't it important to not only have respect, but healthy relationships should have mutual respect, right? How do we have mutual respect? Or maybe if we don't, like Don in your situation, how do we kick them out? How do we get out of that toxic? Um, Rhonda, I know you're an out kind of person, so kick them out. uh, Way more people are out than in, in my life. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'm an introvert. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just that, like, it takes me 30 years to let somebody get in. Hold hold that answer, because I'm going to say, 
that's actually super normal. Okay. We think that we have to have lots of friends, lots of social things, especially when we want to be wanted and we had a lot of loss or loneliness in our trauma. But science and research actually says Americans have two to three close, intimate friends close partners. This may be a significant other. It may be a relative. It might be who you call a friend, but two to three at a time. They may change. But when we think millions, hundreds, lots of research says different. So being Mm -hmm. um, at ease with our realistic expectations of what those intimate relationships are. Sorry, Rhonda. That's really good. Um, Okay. Gosh, I have a lot to say. Don, what you were saying to me when I went right straight back to you, Diana, with boundaries, because when we seek validation, and it doesn't matter, I mean, everybody does, it's a totally normal thing. I mean, I can say, um, gosh, you know, do you think this looks okay on me? Or is this top? Is this just too busy? I mean, I'm seeking validation, right? Um, or what do you think of my hair? Should I cut my hair shorter? Should, like, we do it all the time. It's just part of life. And so I think that survivors, we have a tendency maybe to seek validation more maybe than the average person, or maybe it's more important to us than the average person. I don't know. All I know is that um, when we seek validation, just exactly what you were saying, I was thinking, wow, I never thought of it this way. We're opening up the door. We're right. Yes, moving the boundary. So if you think about a boundary like a, a little like a little fence around us, mm-hmm. um, it, it, it's like if I say to you, "Well, what do you think about this?" Think about I'm this. moving the little fence away, and I'm letting you get awfully close to me, and and it's a but it's a it's a thing that we have to do like in the workplace. I, th- I think you were talking about the workplace and I'm thinking, I mean, that's, that's a thing that we need to do. If our boss, supervisor, whoever doesn't have a regularly scheduled thing where you sit down and go and they go, here's where you're doing great. Here's where you need improvement. Here's, you know, it, think about doing this or whatever. And they're making suggestions. Like if, if you don't, if that's not happening in the workplace, mm-hmm. I think, I mean, we all, all of us who want to do well, will say, um, how do you think I can improve? What, what can I do here? To, or is, it, is there something that you can see that I could be doing better? And I think, I think for those of us who are seeking healthy relationships, we we want to do that with the people that we're in relationship with. I know mm-hmm. I have, I think asked every single one of you at different times, how could I do this better? How could I improve on this or that? And it's a healthy thing to do. But when we when we move the fence and we ask the question, mm-hmm. we've effectively given the other person permission to say whatever they're going to say. And that's why I think it goes like Diana with you, with the boundaries, I, to me, Mm -hmm. it goes back to, I'm going to choose very carefully. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that too. I know I can say it to each one of you any day of the week. How could I be better? What can I do? And even if I don't like the answer, I don't have to be offended. I'm not going to be harmed. And I say harmed intentionally because there's a huge difference between hurting me and harming me. Okay. Right. If I go to the dentist and the dentist does, you know, pulls a tooth, it's going to hurt. But the dentist is doing it for my own good. He's not doing it to harm me. Right. So when I give permission to for somebody to, you know, just, okay, tell me the truth. Is my hair awful? Like, do I need to, what? Okay. Uh, if you give me the answer, no, you know, really, you would look 100% better if you had this cute little short haircut or whatever. I, I'm not harmed. Right? So 
I, I don't know if this is helping, Don, but I just keep thinking about, okay, if, if you weren't hurt by the response, I want to encourage you to think about the difference between harm and hurt. And is there anything positive that you can take out of it and then throw the rest away? I mean, there, I like there, that. I like the throw the rest away. I like that. Sorry to interrupt. I, I like when you say that, though. It's so important. Uh, no, um, this was actual mean, um, but some of it was good. Some of it was mean. So what I've what I resorted to is, do I do I really need approval from this person? Do or or were, um, growing up, I always had things being told to do. I was told what to do. I was told to make this choice. I was it was already made for me. So I'm learning that, uh, Dawn, <laughs> you adult girl, you can make your own choices. And so, um, yeah, sometimes I don't want to do that. I'm just like, someone just tell me what to do. And I'm like, nope. So you're right. Like if we open that door, we have to go, okay, (laughs) I might not like what's about to be said. So I'm learning that with that particular situation, I'm not opening that door anymore. I'm not going to ask. Yeah. It's the trust. You have to be able to trust the person. That was such a great visual for me because I'm literally... That as you're saying that, Rhonda, there's a gate in front of me, and I'm like, okay, I just opened the door or open that gate. So they get to walk in and punch me right in the face if they want to punch me in the face. I literally let them in to punch me in the face because yep. if they want to, right? I'm allowing that to happen. I invited that in. In so now when you when you measure the the person who is saying that to you, and you look at them, you evaluate that person. You're like, hold on a minute. I don't even necessarily want you in this circle. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Hey, let me close the gate. I, that was a mistake. <laughs> Bye. And then you just let it go. Let it go. <laughs> That's what we have to do. I like that. And sometimes we're in situations like in a work or something where we can't avoid them maybe. But mm-hmm. if there's not a mutual respect, then it's not a healthy relationship. So you can have a work relationship without engaging in what you want in your life as your healthy relationships. You will have, we all will have relationships that maybe aren't healthy around us, but that doesn't mean we have to feed into them. We can say, at that's not a relationship I'm going to feed into more than I have to. This is my healthy relationship, and these I will feed into. This I will not. And that's really, really important. Because another couple characteristics that are important in healthy relationships are those that they need to be safe. You have to feel safe. And it's not just literally safe. You have to feel safe in that relationship, which is right off, Diana, what you were saying and Rhonda had said of trust. You have to feel safe. But the other thing, uh, another couple that are listed are is being supportive. Healthy relationships are supportive, which means they provide encouragement and emotional help to each other. Don, your relationship in a healthy relationship would be supportive and collaborative, maybe constructive as needed, Rhonda. But at the same time, this if it's one-sided or not supportive, then maybe that's a red flag that this isn't healthy or something needs changed. Oh, that's really good, Amber, because I was thinking, um, it, I've been I've been working on launching a uh, a prevention program preventing child sex trafficking. And I, and I, you just made me think about how, how people get sort of sucked into toxic relationships. Now it's it's an extreme example to say, you know, this, you, you're in this relationship, you think it's a relationship and then the person winds up sort of greenwashing you into being trafficked or whatever. So that's extreme. But a lot of people like, Average people find themselves in toxic relationships that just suck the life out of you. And so I thought it might make some sense to to give folks an idea of, you know, if if you're in a relationship, and a, a lot of survivors, I think, that we're probably more susceptible to toxic relationships than others because that's what we grew up with that's what we know so it's kind of normal 
But at some point in time in our lives, I think we need to like, just go, wait, stop. Is, is it, is this relationship encouraging me, empowering me, filling me up in some good way? Or is it constantly negative? Is it always negative? I mean, think about the friend who, you know, calls you and they talk for 45 minutes about all the awful things in their life and never one Mm -hmm. time say, and so how are you? You know, so like, it's always negative. Lack of respect. We talked about that. Um, Just like consistent unhappiness and 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 it, it kind of an imbalance in the relationship. I think, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong to say that almost all of us have probably had some relationship somewhere where it felt like it was an imbalance. Like you're always the one doing something for that person. You're giving them a ride somewhere. You're picking up groceries for them. You're loaning them money. You're listening to them on the phone for 90 minutes while your own life, you know, is like you're not paying attention to your kids or you're not doing what you're supposed to do because you're on the phone keeping this person fixed or whatever it is. But but it's that it's an imbalance. And not to say that there needs to be like a spreadsheet, you know, and okay, well, I did this for you. So you have to do that for me. No, but I think a lot of us get kind of, you know, swept up into those kinds of relationships where we're basically, you know, being used or trampled on. Yeah. Did I, did I get an amen? That's an amen, but I want something here. So um, (laughs) the saying give, take, I don't do give, take, I do give, give. I Mm -hmm. I tell my, we're like, we're, we're, this is a give, give relationship. I give you, you give me, we're good. Hmm. Okay. I told you. How often do they? (laughs) What? I told you I have some crazy things that I do off the why ideas. That's um. All right. All right. So it's not a take. You want them to give as well. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Because I thought you were just gonna. You were saying I misunderstood at first. I thought you were just saying I just give, 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 give. I do. I I know that's how Rhonda took it too. I went to. place like we're both giving okay we're both giving i said my sister yeah Yeah. so i said we don't have a take give take relationship um we have a give give um i bought lunch for you last time and you're buying lunch for me what's a give give i listen to you you Uh, i mean i like that i mean it's 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 this it's this it's the same because i don't like the word take either i'm not trying to take from my friends i'm just you know if i'm gonna be if we're in a if if we're in a, a friendship if we're in a a healthy friendship, then, Hey, listen, it's not all even it's not, Oh, guess what? In in September, remember all those things I did for you because you were down and remember you were all upset and your boyfriend broke up with you and blah, blah, blah. I was there. Well, well, it's October now. It's my turn. I'm having some struggles. So where are you at? You know what I mean? It isn't like that. It's, it's, it's natural, right? I mean, if it's a healthy relationship, it's just, it's natural. You don't, and it doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like you've done, you, there's no tally because you don't feel like you're overtaxed in any way that you've overfriended someone, you know, if it's healthy, when it's not healthy, that is when you're, you're like, okay, I'm really overfriending this human because this human is not friending me back in the same way. You know what I mean? They're not being that person for me. Um, so, but again, boundaries. That's where that comes from. It's boundaries. It's, you know, what are you learning here, Diana? Pay attention. You know, those things. So, um, but I, I do like the give, give once, once you said it, or once I understood what you meant by that, that I, I understand what you're saying. They're giving, you're giving. It's a, it's mutual respect, right? Amber, mutual respect in a relationship, but friending and friending. That's the word that don't over, in my don't mind over mutual. Yes. Yeah. So Amber, you know, can we, talk about I'm curious to know what you have to say um so for those of us who grew up in dysfunctional families I mean after all this is the successful survivors podcast so for those Mm -hmm. of us who maybe haven't seen a lot of healthy relationships can we can you give us some pointers on how to create healthy relationships 
I'll be writing things down. That, yeah. <laughs> Me too. I think the, the first relationship and the most important relationship we have is the lifelong one with ourselves. So the way we treat ourselves and see ourselves will replicate what we will seek in relationship to others. So always starting with respecting ourselves, forgiving ourselves, trusting ourselves, supporting our imperfections, seeking out help if we need to do that. All of these things, because again, it is our most intimate relationship of our life. Sometimes we don't know how to do that. So we need to either talk to a counselor, look up these words. This is why I wanted to be specific with the words and what they mean, because a lot of us in trauma, especially, you know, when I was little, I didn't know what that meant. And so really understanding what that is. And then when you get to see social media and these people on TV and stuff, study their relationships. Is it similar? Is it different? Because we don't know what we don't know. I think somebody mentioned that earlier. So you have to learn how other relationships are and then decide, do I want that? Do I not? And it kind of phasing it in that. Sometimes we can hear great stories too from other people of relationships, but learning about them from other people, learning what relationships have worked and what you want and what relationships haven't in what you want. Mm-hmm. I know you guys probably have some ideas too, or Rhonda, you're thinking something there. Well, my, you know, I listened, to, I listened to all of you and, um, and then sometimes my mind, I'll hear something and then I just go there and I've really, my, my body is here and I'm facing forward, <laughs> but I just went someplace. So something that you said made me think about, right? She go. <laughs> Um, thinking about, and I don't even, I don't know if you said these words or this is just where my brain went, but thinking about how important communication is effective, right? Communication. So, yeah. So I'm going to tell you, communication is the number one thing in relationships. 90% of our communication is nonverbal. The way I'm moving my hand right now, the way I smile all the time, the way I nonverbal communication, it's our tones, it's our expressions, it's our movement, it's our um, nonverbal communication. 10% is verbal. Wow. And all this, I've been using all these words when all I had to do was make it like a Look. <laughs> okay, listen, make no mistake. I've known you for a really long time. Always know where you're at. Always <laughs> know where Rhonda's at. <laughs> Same. Well, if I if I'm gonna video chat and I'm do you know, everybody's always gonna know what's going on in my brain. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. It's right there, huh? You know, that's so interesting, Amber, because I was thinking about In a toxic, I'm going back to toxic relationship because, you know, earlier in my life, I had toxic relationships. I thought they were totally normal because that's how it was for me growing up. So when you can't, when, when the, when the other person in the relationship just will not allow, uh, the space or the time or the receptivity to effective communication, that's to me like a flashing neon light that that there might be some toxicity there now i have to go back and say you know if if we're talking about being in relationship with somebody who's unwell you know they're just they're they're physically sick they're um spiritually emotionally unwell they're going through a hard hard time they lost their job or you know um when somebody's going through a, a hard patch, they can act like all the things I said before, negative and in lack of respect. And, you know, there's an imbalance there. might There's, you know, in any kind of good, healthy, long term relationship, there are times when, yeah, I'm pouring more in than you are. 
you know, because that other person's going through something. So I just wanted to sort of qualify that, but in a good, healthy relationship where uh, aside from the kind of ebbs and flows that happen in people's lives, if, if the other person just doesn't want to hear what you have to say, or they get angry, or, you know, you say, well, when, when you do that, it makes me feel like this. And they scream at you or whatever they don't receive it well to me that's a bad sign Mm -hmm. like there has to be there has to be that communication where you're willing to sit there and listen to what they say without interruption and then they have to be able to do that with you too but what do you I mean you guys Don um I was gonna say too what I was was thinking when you were talking is when you can't be yourself like when you have something you want to say and you like you hold it back or you have something that you're feeling and you don't feel like you can say it. I feel like that's also a red flag. Mm-hmm. Be able to be mm-hmm. you um, and know that also also knowing that someone's not going to assume the worst of you right away. Right. They're going to give you that benefit of the doubt. OK, your character doesn't say always bad. Your character doesn't say. Uh, what you just said, like my give give, y'all didn't understand me until I explained it. But y'all didn't go, oh, Dawn's awful. Why could? Why would she say that? You you asked, right? You know. So for me, and then I was like, oh, hey, wait a minute, no, no, that's not what I meant. So I think being, you know, hiding who you are and not being able to say or be who you are in a relationship out of fear, out of man, I don't, I don't know. Last time I said something, this is how it went, and it was scary or. It was, I don't really know. I feel like that's not, that's a, that's a red flag too for me anymore. Huge, huge red flag. You shouldn't have to ever have to hide your, hide who you are. Listen, I'm, I am still, I've been with this man since 2011 and I have, you know, there's times I don't like to bring things up to him, little insecure, but I'm never worried about him yelling at me. If I bring something up, I'm never worried about him harming me. Right. I'm never worried about any of those things. I might be worried he might not, might not agree with me. I would like to buy another house someday. Well, we can't do that right now, honey. Uh, well, why not? Well, you know, because he's more financially responsible than Diana is. So listen, there, there's, he, might, he might just be, you know, not agreeing with certain things, but I'm not scared to talk to him, right? I'm not worried about him harming me. I love that you said that, Rhonda, when you said harming, because I might get my feelers hurt, which I use feelers often by the way. I love how she says feelers instead of feelings. I love it. Just get her feelings hurt. I might get my feelers hurt, but I am not, I'm not worried about him harming me. I'm not worried about my friends, the people that are you know closest to me. I'm not worried about them harming me. When I get, when I feel incredibly disrespected, when there's not disrespect, or I mean, not re- when there's not respect and there is disrespect, that is where I am allowing harm to come in because that breaks me down. That breaks my strength down that I have worked on for 57 years of my life. You know, I've worked on, you know, being a solid, confident, you know, loving benefit to society, not benefit. It wasn't, um, what is it? What am I looking for? Someone help me with the word. You're doing something for the greater good always for the benefit of others. Yes. I want the word. Anyway, whatever it is, I don't know the word, but whatever. I want to, I want to, same, 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 same. I want to be a good human. You know, that's just, I want to be that person. So if I've worked so, so hard and then I allow somebody to come in who's been disrespectful, I, I, that, that cuts me down. I'm like, look at my chair right now. Look at this. Look what's happening on the video, right? I'm like, I, I feel this small when I, I should True. feel like this, right? I'm, I'm being strong, but now I'm, I feel like this. And it's vulnerable. It makes me feel it's it's damaging though. That's harmful for me because it takes me back. Now I'm like, wait, I did so much work to get strong. How am I allowing somebody to be disrespectful to me? You know? Come on now. Boom. <laughs> I will find that word. <laughs> and it, sometimes you, we hear people say that, like, how am I doing contribution how am I to society? That oh, there you contribution go. Contribution to society. Contribution contribution 
<laughs> it, All right. People will ask Sorry. that question you had at the end as you were thinking of your contributions. This was a great insight to give is uh, when we think, how am I letting the person we're, and we cr start criticizing ourselves and do using those unhealthy relationship skills in ourselves to ourselves <laughs> yes. while we're trying to figure out the what's going on. So just being aware of that helps us prevent it a little more. And if you're one that you're like, man, I just, I don't know these good relationship skills or these things that I want in a healthy relationship, then fine. Decide what you don't want. Sometimes there's still power in deciding yeah. what you don't want because that opens the channel for you to explore what you do. Okay. It's always important to, to know that you can grow in that. I'm sorry, Don. That's where I started. Because I, I'm like, I don't want that. I don't want someone to talk down to me. I don't want someone to uh, disrespect me or ignore me. So I don't do that to others. Um, so, yeah. That was okay. good. That was, yourself, a really, that was really, that was, yeah. Deciding what you do want uh, for yourself allows you to come up with that. So it's a beautiful gift to do that. Yeah. All right. Final thoughts. Rhonda, you have a thought there. I do. I do, Amber. And I know you're the researcher. I know that you probably know uh, from research um, why healthy relationships are so important. So I keep I'm thinking about, you know, the person who's maybe listening and um, and they're going, well, he doesn't hit me. I mean, it's not that bad. Uh, or, you know what I mean? Like the person who's like, okay, I, I don't think this is all that important. I'm going to turn this off or, you know, I'm just going to move on. I'm, I'm going to disregard this because it sounds like it's just not that big of a deal. And I'm thinking, okay, well, wait a minute. I'm probably older than the average listener. So I'll just pretend like I'm your mama or your favorite aunt right now and, and go to why this is so important because Toxic relationships are harmful, not just hurtful. They're mm -hmm. harmful. Harmful. And, mm -hmm. and Amber, I know you can support. To me, this is just me in my life. Like, I don't know all the research behind it. And I know that you do. But I think about top bad when you're in really, truly bad relationships, harmful relationships. Um, it, it, it hurts emotionally. It's bad for you physically. It can take a toll on your physical body. It can move you into medicating yourself, whether, and it doesn't have to be pills or alcohol or pot or whatever. It can be eating a gallon of ice cream, whatever it is. It's not good for you um, when you're in relationships that move you into feeling like you have to like somehow self-medicate to make yourself get through it. It it um it holds you back from personal growth and development because conversely, when you're with people who really truly love you and they want the best for you, they encourage you, um, they empower you, they say, yeah, you can start that business. I'll never forget the person there was one person in my life who when when I kind of thought was thinking about starting my own business said, you can do that. You can walk on water. Are you kidding? What, you know, what, what are you waiting for? Just do it. And, and that was a hundred years ago. I mean, that was 1989. And I still remember vividly that person saying that to me, when you're in a toxic relationship, the other person doesn't say encouraging and empowering stuff to you in a sincere, really, truly empowering way. Because most of the time, at least I think in my experience, they're either threatened by me, they don't really want me to get ahead because that makes them look bad or or they're in competition mm -hmm. with me. So they're they're trying to win. They they don't want me to win. Um, you know, all of that ugly stuff. So it holds you back. I mean, I could go on and on and on. It diminishes your happiness. Um, it's not real love, it's phony fake love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just going to say that, you know, you take yourself out of the physical and sexual abuse, it stops. But the emo emotional and mental abuse stays with you even when you're out of that environment and you have good people speaking to you. There's always that nagging little back of the 
subconscious brain, wherever it's at in there floating around that stays with you much longer. And it's the longer you stay in some kind of relationship like that, the longer it takes for you to get out of it. Um, like I was a kid when that happened. So I didn't have the language and I couldn't say, Hey, I want to leave this relationship because it's awful. But as adults, we have a little more, you know, a little more control of that. And we don't think that we do because that's what the abuser is doing is taking that control away and saying, Oh wait, I don't have any control. Cause here's what I'm going to tell you. And that everything that they say, they keep saying it repeatedly or different things they say, they keep holding you back every single time. And you keep having this, you know, wanting you, you hear a positive thing in your life. Oh, but this, there's 20 million other ones that are negative that have come from this other person. Yeah, go ahead, Diana. I will tell you this. Pretty Woman is one of the one of my favorite movies ever. Richard Gere, right? Okay, Julia Roberts. Pretty Woman. One of the lines in there, and I have said this ever since I've seen this movie. But when he says, I think you have a lot of special gifts. She says, the hard stuff is easier to believe. The bad stuff, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the bad stuff is easier to believe. I know I messed that up, but that's what it mm -hmm. is. It's the bad stuff is easier to believe because it is just like what you just said. So someone could just, you know, praise, 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 praise. Yeah, this one person might come in and they throw that self-doubt and you're like, hold on a minute. I remember when my dad said you weren't going to amount to anything. I remember that time when that other person said you were a loser, you know, the hard stuff or the bad stuff is easier to believe. It's easier. It just is. Um, you know, Amber, I have like, and I know it, we're going to wrap this up right now. I just want to say quickly, I'm not going to say every, I'm not going to elaborate, but here's things to think about when, when there's a toxic relationship that you need to leave, it is a delicate matter. It bottom line, it's a delicate matter. Whether it's a, a spouse, whether it's a friendship, it's always going to be a delicate matter. First thing is to have open communication with that person. Try and be honest. Try and do that. Number two, safety first. So if it's a physically or emotionally abusive relationship, just seek some kind of safety, whether, you know, if it's physical, obviously, you know, hotline, domestic, you know, domestic violence hotline, et cetera, local organizations will provide that. So that's number two, safety first. Number three, Seek professional help. Find mm -hmm. a therapist, find counseling, find friends, something supportive. Build number four, build a supportive network. That support mm -hmm. network. Lean on family, friends. You know, try and find that, you know, because when you're leaving a toxic relationship, that will help make it less daunting. And then mm -hmm. five, create that exit plan. Help and develop practical plan for leaving. Uh, provide, you know, the safe place. Um, seek legal advice, you know, protect your financial assets, if that's a thing, if you need to do that. Um, six, self-care. Just emphasize that self-care, that self-compassion, that talking to yourself, right? The most important relationship you have, like you said, Amber, is with yourself because leaving a toxic relationship is incredibly draining on you mentally. It is so draining. And lastly, seven, once you do that, maintain that that the, the fact that you left no contact just just you got it you got to be able to go and then you got to go back to that supportive network so you, you stay gone you know so those were mm -hmm. just seven things i just really wanted to end with because i think it's incredibly important um for those little points beautiful. if anybody wants listening yeah thank you that that is beautiful and i love how you laid it out and it can be applicable to really any type of relationship um, because there's so many aspects in it that's important so i think mm -hmm. that is a great summary to what we've talked about we've also touched on a lot of different things that i want to make sure our audience knows that we're going to continue having these conversations we've talked about some some things that have mentioned that are going to be coming up in future podcasts uh, and letting us know if there's other conversations that you want to have but all of these lead into so much more that those of us from hard experiences and trauma and child abuse and neglect and all of those things really have experienced that we want to bring to the forefront of awareness and acknowledgement, but also healing from. So continue coming back, use those resources that Diana listed, all the great tips of being able to have healthy relationships and being able to know what is most valuable to you and how to carry those into your day-to-day -day life. So continue following the Successful Survivors podcast and we will be seeing you next time.
Bye, everyone. Bye.